Hello and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe 2024. I am your messenger of the Word of God, Shenandoah Briscoe, and today we're going to be covering Leviticus 25 and Mark 1, 23 through 45. Father, I just ask for clarity of voice and articulation and a smooth reading of your word so that it may be a blessing to you and for all those who have tuned in from all around the world. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, Amen. The Sabbath year, Leviticus 25. The Lord said to Moses at Mount Sinai, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, when you enter the land I am going to give to you, the land itself must observe a Sabbath to the Lord. For six years sow your fields, and for six years prune your vineyards and gather their crops. But on the seventh year the land is to have a year of Sabbath rest, a Sabbath to the Lord. Do not sow your fields or prune your vineyards. Do not reap with what grows of itself, or harvest the grapes of your untended vines. The land is to have a year of rest. Whatever the land yields during the Sabbath year will be food for you, for yourself, your male and female servants, and the hired worker and temporary resident who lives among you as well as for your livestock and the wild animals in your land. Whatever the land produces may be eaten. The Year of Jubilee Count off seven Sabbath years, seven times seven years, so that the seventh Sabbath years amount to a period of forty-nine years. Then have the trumpet sounded everywhere on the tenth day of the seventh month, on the Day of Atonement, sound the trumpet throughout your land. Consecrate the fifth year and proclaim liberty throughout the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you. Each of you is to return to your family property and to your own clan. The fifth year shall be a jubilee for you. Do not sow and do not reap what grows of itself or harvest the untended vines, for it is a jubilee and is to be holy for you. Eat only what is taken directly from the fields. In this year of jubilee, everyone is to return to their own property. If you sell land to any of your own people or buy land from them, do not take advantage of each other. You are to buy from your own people on the basis of the number of years since the Jubilee, and they are to sell you on the basis of the number of years left for harvest crops. Now, when the years are many, you are to increase the price, and when the years are few, you are to decrease the price, because what is really being sold to you is the number of crops. Do not take advantage of each other, but fear your God. I am the Lord your God. Follow my decrees, and be careful to obey my laws and you will live safely in the land. Then the land will yield its fruits, and you will eat your fill and live there in safety. You may ask, what will we eat in the seventh year if we do not plant or harvest our crops? Well, I will send you such a blessing in the sixth years that the land will yield enough for three years, and while you plant during the eighth year, you will eat from the old crop, and will continue to eat from it until the harvest of the ninth year comes. And 
the land. The land must not be sold permanently, because the land is mine, and you reside in my land as foreigners and strangers throughout the land that you hold as a possession. You must provide for the redemption of the land. If one of you follows Israelites, if one of your fellow Israelites becomes poor and sells some of their property, their nearest relative is to come and redeem what they have sold. If, however, there is no one to redeem it for them, but later on they prosper and acquire sufficient meals or means to redeem it themselves, they are to determine the value of the years since they sold it and refund the balance to the one to whom they sold it. They can then go back to their own property. But if they do not acquire the means to repay, what is sold will remain in the possession of the buyer until the year of Jubilee. It will be returned in Jubilee, and they can go back to their property. Anyone who sells a house in a walled city retains the right to redemption a full year after its sale. During that time, the seller may redeem it. If it is not redeemed before a full year has passed, the house is walled city in the walled city shall belong permanently to the buyer and the buyer's descendants. It is not to be returned to the in the Jubilee. But houses and villages without walls around them are to be considered as belonging to the open country. They can be redeemed and they are to be returned in the Jubilee. The Levites always have the right to redeem their houses in the Leviticus towns which they possess. So the property of the Levites is redeemable, that is, a house sold in any town they hold, and is to be returned in the Jubilee because the house is in the houses in the towns of the Levites are their property among the Israelites. But the pasture land belonging to their towns must not be sold. It is their permanent possession. If any of your fellow Israelites become poor and are unable to support themselves among you, help them as you would a foreigner and a stranger so they can continue to live among you. Do not take interest or any profit from them but fear your God, so that they may continue to live among you. You must not lend them money at interest, or sell them food at a profit. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt to give you the land of Canaan, and to be your God. If any of your fellow Israelites becomes poor and sell themselves to you, do not make them work as slaves. They are to be treated as hired workers or temporary residents among you. They are to work for you until the year of Jubilee. Then they and their children are to be released, and they will go back to their own clans and to the property of their ancestors. Because the Israelites are my servants, whom I brought up out of Egypt, and they must not be sold as slaves. Do not rule over them ruthlessly, but with fear of your God. Your male and female slaves are to be come from the nations around you. From them you may buy slaves. You may also by some of the temporary residents living among you, and members of their clans born in your country, 
and they will become your property. You can bequeath them to your children as inherited property and can make them slaves for life. But you must not rule over your fellow Israelites ruthlessly. If a foreigner residing among you becomes rich and any of your fellow Israelites become poor and sell themselves to the foreigner or to the members of the foreigner's clan, they retain the right of redemption after they have sold themselves. One of their relatives may redeem them. An uncle or a cousin or any blood relative in their clan may redeem them. Or, if they prosper, they may redeem themselves. So, they and their buyer are to count the time from the year they sold them up to the year of Jubilee. The price of their release is to be based on the rate paid to a hired worker for that number of years. If many years remain, they must pay for their redemption, a large share of the price paid for them. If only a few years remain until the year of Jubilee, then they are to compute that and pay for their redemption accordingly. They are to be treated as workers hired from year to year. You must see to it that those to whom they owe services, do not rule over them ruthlessly. Even if someone is not redeemed in any of these ways, and their children are to be released in the year of Jubilee, they and their children. For the Israelites belong to me as servants. They are my servants, whom I brought up out of Egypt. I and the Lord and your God. That was Leviticus 25. Now we will be turning to Mark 1, 23. Mark 1, 23. Just then, a man in the synagogue who was possessed by an impure spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Why? Hi, have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. And the impure spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, What is this? A new teaching? And with authority, he even gives orders to impure spirits, and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. Jesus heals me. As soon as they had left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening, after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door, and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also devoured drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak, because they knew who he was. Jesus prays in a solitary place. Very early in the morning, uh, in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look after him, and when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, 
Let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. And so he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in the synagogues and driving out demons. Jesus heals a man with leprosy. A man with leprosy came to him and begged him on his knees, If you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus was indignant. He reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately the leprosy left him, and he was cleansed. Jesus sent him away at once with a strong warning. See that you do not tell this to anyone, but go show yourself to the priests and offer the sacrifice that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Instead, he went out and began to talk freely, spreading the news. As a result, Jesus could no longer enter a town openly, but stayed outside in lonely places, yet the people still came to him from everywhere. That was Mark 1, 23-45, which concludes the Bible with Frisco 20-23-4 for today. Tomorrow we will be covering Leviticus 26-27 and Mark 2. Father, I just thank you for your word, because if it were not for your word, I would not be able to be your messenger of the word. And so I give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, amen. I'd like to thank you folks for tuning in to the Bible with Briscoe 2024 for today. I, Shannon Joe Briscoe, have enjoyed being your messenger of the word of God. And as always, you know, God loves you, and so do I. So come back and see us again tomorrow, because God will and will be here. And we hope that you are too. Thank you. God bless you. And... Please like and share.